you. Okay. So the gentleman who wrote Lift Every Voice and Sing, which is known as the Black National Anthem, his name is James Weldon Johnson. All right. All right. The next one. She was the first Black actress to win a prime time Lead Actress Emmy Award. And that is Miss Cicely Tyson. Very important to know. All right, the next one. The Nicholas Brothers developed a type of dance which combined jazz, ballet, and tap and became known as classical tap. Okay, and the Nicholas Brothers were named Bayard, Antonio, and Harold Lloyd. Wow. Bayard, Antonio, and Harold Lloyd. So classic tap as we know it today was a combination of uh, types of dance that they put together and made it fancy and beautiful. Okay. All right. Um, now I see where I can write these actually better. So this is kind of good going through it this way. Uh, the first African-American woman in space. She took flight in 1992 on the Endeavor. And her name is Mae Jameson. Mm -hmm. A lot of these, I wrote it so it would be hard. I just didn't realize this is a lot of missing from history that you're given or it's not given to you in this way so it's all good we have 50 terms and people to learn about today okay. did you know uh -huh. did you know that dr um dr may was on she starred in an episode of star trek i did that I was, was awesome. front and center for that yeah. episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is amazing. I was so stoked. Yeah, great. But thank you for bringing that. And actually, I should add that to the trivia. Um, okay. Gideon, no, Gion Bluford Jr. is the first African-American astronaut and he made that um, distinction in 1983 on the Challenger. Okay. Most of you have heard about Catherine Dunham or Dunham. She was a black dancer of the 1940s who involved the study of anthropology, researching Afro Haitian West Indian and Latin dance forms and contributing these findings to the growing vocabulary of modern jazz dance. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, Katherine Johnson is the next person and she was featured in Hidden Figures. She was one of three of the NASA mathematics mathematicians. Um, she is literally a rocket scientist. You hear all those jokes about rocket scientists. Well, she really <laughs> is one. And she helped put a man on the moon and help direct his course back into Earth so he could land uh, safely. Okay, so that was extremely important. Give me one second.
So since we're not going to do a game, I do want everyone who is present to get points. So at some point, I'm going to need you to unmute. So that goes for Makai, because you never unmute. You have never shown your face. So in order for you to get these points, you got to unmute and make a comment, even if you're not answering the questions. Okay, um, the next person on our black history list is Lionel Fernandez. At age 42, he became the youngest president of the Dominican Republic in 1996. And he served 1996, 2004 and 2012. I think the only reason why he wasn't, he didn't serve in 2000 is because there was some political issues going on. But yeah, he's an important person to know about as well. Have you ever heard of George Crumb? Well, he accidentally invented the potato chip. So he was serving, um, say, what we know today is like steak cut fries. And who he was serving them to said that they were just a bit too thick. So he made them smaller. They said they were still too thick. So he was like, okay, well, I'm going to show them. I'm going to make it as thin as I possibly can. So now do you like these? They were like, yes, we love them. So that was the birth of the potato chip. Okay, well, next person on our list is Rihanna, also named Robin Rihanna Fenty. That's her whole full name. She's a Barbadian singer, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. She also established the Believe Foundation that helped terminally ill children, and she also has Fenty Beauty. And of course, we know that she is a recording artist. So Rihanna is one person I wanted to highlight today in this eclectic list. Okay, our next person is Celia Cruz, and she is known as the Queen of Salsa. Incidentally, I am gonna post these for you. Um, I just didn't turn them on before class today, but I'll just turn them on as soon as we're done. The next person on the list is um, Charlotte Allen Moses. She is the first Afro Nicaraguan, the Nicro, Mi, Nicaraguan crowned Miss Nicaragua in 2011. Okay, there are many, many black people that live in um, North America, South America. Um, there's a high concentration of them in South, South America. Okay, the Nok civilization is an ancient African society located in present day Nigeria. And they were renowned for their life-size terracotta sculptures, as you see here. Um, see they, it. huh? Oh, you saw, oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. You can't see it? Okay, uh, that's under, that's right about there. I can see it now. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, they, disappeared somewhere between 200 and 300 CE, but for no known reason. It wasn't like it was documented that the Nox civilization came down with a certain disease or they were massacred or there's no indication of how, why they disappeared, but they disappeared in that span of time. All right, the Thailand Mani. Have you ever heard of the Thailand Mani? They are a Thailand ethnic group, also referred to as Negrito, um, thought to be the only group to have traveled from Africa and settled in Thailand. They are a small group, but as you can see in the picture um, of this little girl, they, you can definitely tell that they are black people. Okay. All right. Abby, the Thailand Abby, is that? Thailand Manny. Manny, okay. 
Okay. The Berbers are an indigenous people of Western North African, North Africa, Morocco, Niger, Algeria, Egypt, Tunisia, Libya, Mali, and um, Mauritania. They're a culture that continues to thrive today. Um, so they've been around for a very, very long time. This is what the people look like. And they are North African. Okay. The Nubians. I'll show you there. That's a little bitty picture, but these are the Nubians. These indigenous people of Northern Africa are a non-Arab group who lived in both Egypt and Sudan, and they remain in Nubia today. Hmm. Okay, this is a picture of ancient um, Mesopotamia. It's the first sign of civilization, and it's the land that is located between the Nigris and the Euphrates rivers, known today as the Middle East. So the first signs of civilization were seen in ancient Mesopotamia. Okay. You may be uh, familiar with Misty Copeland. She is the first African American, hold on, acclaimed ballerina to be appointed as principal dancer for the American Ballet Theater. Okay. I'm pretty sure all of you know Oprah. <laughs> she was the supervising producer and host of the top rated award-winning talk show for two decades. Um, and today she is, she continues to be a global media leader and philanthropist. And um, she's Aquarian too, Mr. Jones, just to let you know. <laughs> um, you also may know this next wonderful person, Serena Williams. I'll show you her picture in just a second. She's an American tennis player. She holds numerous records. She's one of the highest paid athletes. She has a famous sister. Who's her famous sister? Uh, so, uh, Serena and uh, Venus. Okay. Who is her daughter? Her two-year-old daughter. What is her name? I have no idea about that. <laughs> Ooh, you should know that. Come on, Makai. Come on, Amina. Olympia? Olympia. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. Um, all right. You should also know these last two. Wilma Rudolph was the first African-American woman to win three Olympic gold medals, and she did so in the track and field, and, she, and this happened in 1960. And look at her hair. Her hair looks like Halle Berry's hair, huh? So hairstyles even are even um, recycled. Our last person for this round, and we have one more round, is Toni Morrison. She is the first African-American woman to receive the Nobel Prize in Literature, and she authored the book Beloved. And that's Toni Morrison. Do you have any questions, comments? Want me to go back over anything? I can show you pictures that I didn't show you before really fast. This is a picture, a terracotta sculpture of um, people of the Nok civilization. This is Charlotte Allen Moses, the beauty queen. This is Celia Cruz. Rihanna. Yeah. Yeah. I had a question. Yeah. Um, for the Nock civilization, you said they were famous for their sculptures, right? 
Yeah. Where, well, that's just, where that's are there sculptures? Because there's there's been like a lot of art that's been taken and like so like other countries get money for them in in different museums where are their sculptures you know that's a wonderful question i will do some digging to find out but i would imagine if they um if the civilization disappeared yeah so did their artifacts uh -huh. those okay. um, sculptures are life-size sculptures they're oh, wow. big they're heavy um we know that there are some that survive because i have that picture but yeah I, i'll do some digging and see what i can find out thanks sure okay this is lionel fernandez i didn't show you before he's the um was the youngest person to hold the uh presidency in the Dominican Republic. Uh, his first was 1996 and then 2004 and then 2012. So oh. he had, he served for a long time. They don't have term limits in oh. other parts of the world the way they do here. Okay. Catherine. Oh. Oh. Yeah, Catherine Johnson. So this was, um, one of the ladies again that was shown in hidden figures the movie and she passed away right after the movie came out oh. catherine dunham what did you say mm. the way she looked she was beautiful really uh really wonderful dancer um guion bluford jr may jameson really tiny come on let me see oh i can't make it bigger that was the nicholas brothers cicely tyson who has aged beautifully. I wish I had to put up her, one of her current pictures. Is she's all white now, but she just aged so beautifully. What were you gonna ask? I was gonna ask what um, year did she win the Emmy? Okay, let me go back. So I'll look it up on my phone while I'm showing this. Let's see. James Weldon Johnson was the, um, person who wrote lift every voice and sing and it was a work that was created between him and his brother i think they both worked on it but he was actually the lyricist and i think his brother wrote the music um She, okay, Cicely Tyson, Emmy. <laughs> okay, they're making me do way too much digging for this. <laughs> um okay she wrote in 1974 for miss jane Pittman, which was a fabulous movie if you have not seen it oh my god you have to see that movie um okay let me go back okay rube foster is known as the father of black baseball medgar evers who was a, again, the field secretary for the NAACP. He was a civil rights activist, also a World War II uh, veteran, but he wanted to make things right for black people um, when it came to the civil rights movement. He was a lawyer and he was killed because he was um, writing a lot of wrongs. So I should bring that out. Medgar Evers was killed assassinated by Byron de la Beckwith, 
1963 because he was man enough, strong enough to right a lot of wrongs that occurred um, against Black people. Marcus Garvey founded the Black Star Line, the shipping line, which um, promoted the return um, of the African diaspora to their ancestral lands. So Marcus Garvey was um, the one who was the leader of the Back to Africa movement. There was a Back to Africa movement in the 80s ask, asking people who were here, who felt like they were here for the wrong reasons against their will, to go back um, to um, reverse the diaspora from the United States for people to go back to Africa. Um, it was not successful because, and I think part of the reason why it wasn't successful is many of us are so um, unfamiliar with Africa and what Africa might be for us that- Have you there? Huh? Have you been there? No, but I do plan to do so. Um, my family is doing our family tree, so I wanna go to the places where my family is actually from. Okay. And to go to Africa, it's expensive. So you should have a plan <laughs> for one, and you should definitely have enough money set aside so you can um, do it successfully. There's a lot of tours there, but you also can figure out what you wanna do and get someone to accompany you. So that's not a, a weekend, like a weekend trip to LA, you really have to be in and out. <laughs> yeah. So there aren't any other questions. I'm going to move to the second, um, second game. Okay, so I'll stop share for a moment. We can always go back to that if we need to. Any other thoughts before we move to the next one? I kind of wish we did the game, but I guess it couldn't happen. So it looked like the game would have been fun. The game would be fun if people could answer the questions. I would have liked to try. You didn't see me try, Mr. Jones? I, I can't, I, that's what I said. You, you said you don't think people could have answered the question. That's just a general statement. I, mean, I just said what well, I would have liked to try. But anyway, I, I wasn't nothing critical. It wasn't critical. Don't take it like that. You know what I'm I ain't taking it like that. Oh, you know what? Maybe I can. Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think I can. So, first question Who's the first woman to officiate a major professional men's sport? In the NBA, she had 919 games that she officiated um, as a, that she officiated as far as men's professional sports. And she was also a referee in the NWE NBA. Or the WNBA, who is this? Is it Palmer? Violet Palmer, yes, yes, yes. Oh, I totally forgot her first name. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, it's, it's all good. All right. Next question. He received the 2018 National Education Association Human and Civil Rights Presidential Award. He has been blackballed from playing professional sports since 2016. Uh, well, Colin Kaepernick. Okay. Colin Kaepernick. Okay, let me keep score. Let me keep score. 
Okay, that's Amina, Jimmy. Um, the first one is Isabella. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you, Isabella. Okay, third question. This Australian 200 meter runner, he stood up for human rights during the 1968 Olympics in Mexico City and he was blacklisted. Who is this person? It wasn't John Carlos. It couldn't be because I said they were Australian. I know. I know. Um, was it Jim Ryan? Peter Norman. Oh, okay. Why his gloves, well, he was blacklisted. He did not hold up his fist, but for some odd reason, his gloves are in the museum. I was like, what? <laughs> anyway, let me move on. Okay. All right. He is the emperor of the kingdom of Mali in Africa. Wait, wait, wait. Let me finish uh, saying the question. He made a famous pilgrimage to Mecca and established trade routes to the Middle East. His net worth was upwards of two, I mean, 400 billion. Go ahead, Mr. Jones. Mansa Musa. Who said that? Mr. Jones said it first. <laughs> but who was the other person? Um, Isabella. Okay, thank you. I think you both can get the point. I know Mr. Mr. Uh, Jones was on it. That's big, boy. Wait a minute. Let me show you his picture. That's Mansa Musa. We need to do a movie about him. Yeah. It's quite interesting. Okay. <clears throat> mm. Who was the African dynasty who built the uh, Great Pyramids? Uh, I want to say Mass Moose, uh, uh, not uh, Hotel, M Hotel. That's a, no, that was a person. The dynasty was the. Um, um, was it the Songhai Empire? It was the Egyptian Fourth Dynasty. Okay. Oh. All right, the first African-American member of the New York City Ballet. Um, in 1955, he opened the Dance Theater of Harlem. Uh, Joffrey, uh, uh, is it George? Mm. Is it Arthur Mitchell? There we go. And that was who? Isabella. Go on, Isabella. <laughs> <laughs> that was Arthur Mitchell. So Dance Theater of Harlem is um, like our, the New York's version of Al Al Alvin Ailey. I put it that way. We have Alvin Ailey. <laughs> they have Arthur Mitchell. Okay, he founded his own dance company in 1958. He produced around 800 ballets, and the most famous of those ballets was named Revelations. I just said his name. Alvin Ailey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just said his name, Alvin Ailey. And he has. I've done more Alvin Ailey concerts than I have concerts where um, 
Arthur Mitchell's pieces were um, redone. And Alvin Ailey's, oof, amazing. If you ever get a chance to go see them, it's amazing. The architect of the step pyramids, he developed medical texts, described 100 diseases and 48 injuries, and he's also known as the father of medicine. And Yes. That's also, that's extremely important for people to know. In 1978, at the age of 19, he became the youngest record producer in Warner Brothers history. He released 39 studio albums during his career. I would say Stevie Wonder. Really? 19? That was late for Stevie Wonder. Um, Anyone else? Stevie Wonder. Is it Bobby Robinson? No. Warner Brothers should give you a hint. No, Michael Jack. Was it Prince? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> did you hear my breath? I am no, such a I Prince. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I am such a Prince fan. Girl, I am such a Prince fan. No, I was like, you guys didn't get this? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. He was the lead <laughs> vocalist at age seven in the, in the family band before becoming a solo artist. He had the rare, yes. <laughs> he had the rare gift of synesthesia and suffered from vitiligo. Those are important. So, what is synesthesia? Skin, some kind of skin stuff? No. Synesthesia is when people see colors when they hear music. Oh, I never heard that. I never yeah, heard that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, see, I'm telling you, it's just, it's a history lesson. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson. It may not be the best picture of Michael Jackson, but <laughs> <laughs> it's Michael Jackson. I should have did one when he was part of Jackson 5. Anyway, so we all have to <laughs> right. he, he was a Brazilian soccer player, dubbed the greatest in history. At age 16, he scored his first professional goal, and his career spanned over 20 years. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Hey, Lay. Hey, Lay. What? I know. The fastest man on earth. You guys should know just from that. Um, just from that. At age 15, he became the youngest male world junior champion, winning gold in the 200 meters. You say gold. gold. Who said that? Lay. Lay, I'm sorry. I oh, will. Three people. Yeah. Leonisha said Usain Bolt. Yes. Bad brother, yeah. That was a bad brother. <laughs> Thank you. Still is a bad brother. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a bad brother. Okay. An African Bolivian king who was part of one of the few traditional African monarchies. His monarchy survived the Middle Passages and slavery. Don't know, don't know? Uh, is it Julio? Mm -hmm. Never knew that. You're like, I have no idea who that is. It's all good. But now you know. Now you know. <laughs> Edgardo Armando Franco, also known as El General, is a Panamanian reggae artist, and he's one of the pioneers of reggae um, espanol, also known as reggaeton. 
I'm just going to show you who he is because there's no, no okay. his information. Um, but it's important to make notes that Black people are part of cultures throughout the world. Every corner of the world where there are people, there is someone there of African descent. Okay. He became the president of Venezuela in 1998 with 56% of the vote and remained in the position until his death in 2013. Um, Hugo Chavez. Yes, yes, yes. And who said that? Isabella. Isabella, you are on fire, girl. <laughs> Thanks. She's like, I just know history. It don't have to be black, Latin, <laughs> I just know history. It's estimated that over 140 million people speak this language in Kenya, Tanzania, Comoros Island, Swahili. Uh, Swahili. Huh? Swahili. Yeah. And who said that? I said it, but someone else said it as well. I'll give it to both. I just need to know who. Oh, Amina. Oh, Leonisha. Okay. Um, okay. Amina and Lanisha, is that how you spell it? Um, pronounce it? It's Leonisha. There's a G on it? No, Leonisha. L A O. Okay. okay, I said it right the first time. <laughs> I'm just making sure I'm saying it right. Yeah, you're fine. Thank you. Okay, a diverse ethnic group thought to be the first settlers in Madagascar. Their makeup is around 60% African and 40% Asian. That's what I'm The Malagasy people of Madagascar. the Malagasy people of Madagascar, okay? Mm. <clears throat> a baboon fib fibula is one of the oldest mathematical objects known at about 35,000 BCE. It holds 29 notches. The markings are thought to symbolize the lunar cycle, which had, um, 29,531 days. What is that baboon fibula called? <laughs> Anybody? Okay, it is the Lebomo. Mm -hmm. A semi-nomadic ethnic group in Kenya. The population is about a half million. They're considered to be the symbol of Kenyan culture. Who is this semi-nomadic ethnic group? Berbers. The Maasai. Ooh. <laughs> Who said that? Leonisha. Go on. Yes, it is the Maasai. And they're talked about more today than they have ever been talked about. So that's good. An ethnic group living in the central plateau region of Mali, West Africa. They have their own systems of astronomy and calendrical measurements that have been passed down through oral history. Who Dogon. is this ethnic group? Huh? Dogon. The Dogon. Go on, Mr. Jones. The Dogons. You know I had to have them in here. You know I had to have them in here. Yeah. An African-American activist and former member of the Black Panther Party and, and the Black Liberation Army um, their last name is Shakur, but I won't tell you their first name, was most definitely a pro-violence rebel 
as she was charged and indicted in uh, relations to seven incidents involving murder, armed robbery, bank robbery, and kidnapping. And another clue, she's Tupac's godmother. Asada. Asada. And who said that? Leonisha. Okay, all right. So, so far, just letting you know, Isabella and Jimmy are tied at five and Leonisha has four. I need to hear from, um, whoops. Come on, Melissa and Makai, you guys got to get in there. I don't know these. You got four more. <laughs> she earned the nickname Moses for leading hundreds of slaves. <laughs> You're like, that's too easy. That's very coming. Okay, so we have a, a three-way tie now. So let's move to the last three. In 1896, she founded the National Association of Colored Women to get women involved in Sajana winning the right to vote. Huh? Sajana Sajana okay, hold that. She was also one of the first African-American women to earn a college degree. You still say Sojourner Truth? Mary Church Terrell. Mary Church. Get it. I know. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna You did. You doing awesome. <laughs> you are doing awesome. She wrote, "I know why the caged bird sings." I am the quiet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me also say that she's an. African American autobiographer and poet, the first black woman to write a screenplay of a major film, and the first female poet of any race to recite a poem at a U.S. presidential inauguration. I have to say all of that. Right. <laughs> Everybody gets the point. Makai, are you chiming in yet? He just silent, just silent. Okay. Um, Melissa, Melissa, you in here too. The whole bunch of jokers, you know, get down like that for Jim Jones, though, not that shit. Right, right, right. This is great. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, Last question. Gloria Jean Watkins, more commonly known by her pen name, is an American Buddhist, feminist, and social activist who writes on the interrelationship between race, class, and gender in relation to structures of oppression and domination. This author of many books, including I, Ain't I a Woman? Who is she? Oh, damn. Get it. Bell Hook? Yes, Amina. Yes, finally. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Listen>. <laughs> Yes, um, Melissa and Amina coming in at the very end is all good. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got in there. That's great. Any questions, comments, people who you say, you shouldn't have left this person out? Anything. <laughs> Nothing? Oh, what about the men Davis, actually. I always think, like, honestly, taking the class, I feel like, I was like, oh, you're, you're like a Bo Angela Davis. <laughs> Girl, I try. I try. <laughs> Once I met her, she, I met her about 10 years ago. And that's somebody that, she's very quiet, but she's also so inspiring. Really? So I've actually been on a different path since meeting her. Oh, that's awesome. She's really amazing with her words, too. Oh, my God. Her voice. I, her I voice. I meet her one day. Yeah. She's not too far from us. <laughs> no, she's actually just in Berkeley, I believe. No, she's in Oakland. No, Santa Cruz, I thought. She moved. Oh, she's close. She's close. Wow. Yeah, yeah. She's close. She's been very inspiring just to listen to her. I think she's in Oakland Hills. 
What? I see her in Whole Foods and I saw you know, her down there. That's why I saw it too. Yeah, she's a clean eater. <laughs> so, <laughs> she's always in Whole Foods and other uh, places like that. Let's see. Mm -hmm. So well, you guys did great. I'm gonna give you these points. Does Bell Hooks write music or just um like no, her. she um, is an author and speaker. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say, Mr. Jones? She's kind of a feminist type, too. Yes, she is. You know who you could add? You could add um, Louis Latimer, who helped create the light bulb. Yeah. Yeah. That would be cool, because not a lot of people know him. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. I will definitely add Lewis. And that gives you another point, Amina. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in at the last second. Right. <laughs> she was like, I'm getting them points. <laughs> Just don't, don't disconnect me. I'm going to get me some points. <laughs> OK, <laughs> anything else? Anyone else? Oh, uh, I don't you, know. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but she's the social activist. And it's, oh, Asada Sakur? Yeah, she actually is in there. So, is she? yeah, I didn't show her face. But let me. Yeah. So this is Asada Shakur. Ah. All of the pictures that you see of her, she's a really beautiful woman. Yeah. Foremost. But most of the pictures you see of her is her um, picture from prison. Yeah. And that's not flattering. That is so cold. <laughs> that is not flattering. Doctor, you can also add uh, Marcellus Edson. He uh, created pe like the peanut butter. Uh huh. Yeah, I was thinking about him as well. Marcellus Edson, yeah. If I'm not mistaken. I thought that was Washington Carver. It was watch. It was um. George Washington Carver was the person that used peanuts to um. He created over 300 inventions by using peanuts, but so, but I think Edson did like the peanut paste or like he was. I want to say. Yeah, towards like the peanut paste. I don't know. He. I thought. I thought it was him, but. Well, I can look more into that person. There are yeah. so many people, and thank you for that contribution. Um, there are so many people in our history that have contributed that don't typically receive um, credit. So I will definitely look up. I know about Louis Latimer. I don't yet know about Marsalis, but I will definitely look him up and find out okay. the things he contributed. Anything else? Anyone else? Oh, what about um, Madam C.J. Walker, who was the first self-made black millionaire? Yes. Yeah. He was actually on my original list. I yes. tried to make um, a combination of, well, first off, um, I'm a member of Urban Intellectuals and they have um, study cards that they created and they have a deck for um, 1492, 
to slavery. And then mm. they have a, um, they have a deck on people who have contributed in STEM. They have women, they have Afro-Caribbean um, leaders and just all kind of information. So I tried to take a little bit from each of those categories and include them here. I definitely had Madam C.J. Walker on my list, but felt like to make room for some of the other ones that we talked about today. Um, yeah, you have a very diverse list. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So did you guys like it? I loved it. Good. Yeah, it was fun. Did you learn? I did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hi. Oh, wow. Actually, like, I didn't know about that Prince and Warner brother, and I love Prince. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna tell you this one little Prince story since I'm a Prince fan, and then I'll let you guys go. So I was in probably junior high, and um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I was in junior high, and my brother and I were watching um, Saturday Night Live. And Prince was the artist that came on that <laughs> evening. And we were so blown away by that um, performance. I was a, a little bit too young to have been up watching it, but I was so glad that I did because we became Prince fans from that one performance. He was, um, I'm pretty sure he was singing Dirty Mind. <laughs> and he had, um, the just the wires of a box spring as his backdrop and he had on um, a long coat and yes bikini briefs and he just was working it out with his guitar and he was so tiny that <laughs> when he was like 19 or 20 when we saw him so and then we followed him from every concert we possibly could from that point up until his death so yeah, um, I'm definitely a Prince fan. Yeah. I had to include him in my first <laughs> Black History game. Yeah, important. <laughs> important. All of these people mean something to my journey, but I gathered this information from urban intellectuals, just to, just to let you know. Okay. So you all have a great day. Um, tomorrow I will be showing blind spotting uh, from 9 to 10.30. That is our last quiz. I will have a, the answers to the previous quiz up later today. So I'll be online tomorrow with the film and I'll also be online throughout the day answering your any questions that you might have. Um, so the, I was gonna ask a quick question about the final. Um, yeah. That is like, I kind of read like about it that we're gonna be informed about it on Monday. Yeah, so I'm gonna set the appointments up on Monday. Okay. But, um, yeah, so the assignment, I will, you can read it. I can go ahead and open it now. Yeah. I can go ahead and open it now. And that, that was one quick question too. Um, to write a bill, there's like a lot of legal working. Are you gonna the like- The format that I gave you on the assignment is all you need to know. Okay. You need to follow that format. Okay. I haven't seen the format. I, haven't. I know you haven't seen the format. I haven't <laughs> opened it. Nobody has, but me. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> it's mine. I'm gonna I'm gonna play with it until I'm ready to release it. But okay. it's ready. It's ready. Okay. So on Monday when we meet, I'll set up time for each person to give their oral presentation of what bills they would write. You obviously are the authors of the bill. You don't have to do any work around that. Um, you have to hook it to an existing bill. You have to create. 
either you're going to create a bill or you're going to find a bill and amend it okay. or you're going to abolish it, crash it, smash it up, throw it to the wind <laughs> and suggest something else. You have to tell, if you abolish a bill, you have to tell why. And you should also, it's more work than the other two, rather, because you don't just abolish a bill and leave a hole there. You abolish a <laughs> bill and you put something in its place, mm -hmm. right? So abolishing would be a two-step where the other ones would be a one-step. Okay, is there some kind of minimum requirement? Or da -da -da -da? What, what, what? Of course it is, but you will see that when I release it. Okay. Uh, it's a simple format. If you want, I can pull it up and we can look yeah. at it together. Please. I would love that. All right. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, whoever has that background noise, please. I don't know who that is. So that's uh, okay. That's the kind, that's the format right there, right? A template. That's it. You can see it. I can see it. Yeah. Yep. All right. So that's so the instructions say: write a bill or amend or abolish a current law. Choose a congressman to introduce your bill. So you need to find out which of your congressmen vote in this way or. Um, this is part of their platform, what they stand for. So find a congressman that who aligns with the bill that you are introducing. Mm -hmm. Make clear who, who your bill or resolution will represent. Are you representing children, older people, women, um, men, what have you? Okay. And then your times to do the presentation will be Wednesday and Thursday next week. So I'll give, um, put up 10 minute slots for you guys to choose from, and then you will present your bill during those times. Okay, so uh, Wednesday or Thursday of next week. And so that, when we do the uh, verbal presentation, we'll, we'll submit it, uh, submit a, a you know, or what, what you call it, a text um, format? Um, well, a text what, file. You're going, what you're going to do is fill out this form. All right. Fill it out in this format. You can email it to me so I have something to reference while you're giving your oral presentation. So you will have to turn in this. Okay. But you're going to talk to me about it. All right. um, okay. I want to know, so before the class started, before others came in, Mr. Jones and I were talking and I shared with him that it would be a good idea. He asked me if the bill needed to be real. And I was like, yeah, it needs to be real in that it's something that you're passionate about, but it doesn't need to be real in that you're not going to take it to Congress and try to advocate for it to become a law but it should be something that you can show your passion about and I should be able to see that in your oral presentation. So if you're not concerned about women at all, don't create a bill about women. Does that make sense? Because I, there will be no I, passion in it. I'd have had my fun if I don't get well no more. But, uh, <laughs> Mr. Jones, <laughs> Melissa, I can't hear you, I'm sorry. You you can't hear me. All right, go ahead. I can't hear you, Melissa. Okay. Melissa? Can you hear me? Yeah. 
Okay, because I guess it says like 200 words or something like that. So I was just wondering. 200 like, words is two paragraphs. But all you're going to do, you're going to give a summary of your bill. Okay. And, and that's where your 200 words come in. You're going to okay. give your bill a title. You are the author, right? And this mm -hmm. enacting clause is just the words that you would use to, as part of the body of your bill. So that enacting clause is something that by law has to be in every bill. So doctor, would it be okay for us to make a like slideshow you with it? You can make a slideshow if you like, or you okay. can just do a document. Okay, and then another question for, for you, sorry. You, I know you said Wednesday and Thursday. Will it be in the same time frame as class today from 12 to two? Yes. Okay. Unless, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna start it at 12 rather, but we can go later than that if we need to. Okay, the only reason I say that, because like even right now I'm at work and I'm trying to like figure out how I can, you know, uh, just yeah. take that time. Yeah, yeah, so I'm thinking that um, I'm going to offer two different, three different chunks of time, like 12 to 2, and then um, uh, maybe 3 to 5, 4. I don't know, 12 to 2, and then 3 to 4, and then 5 to 6, or maybe 6 to 7, something like that, because I know there's so many people that are working, and there's so many people that are working, so I'll offer time slots throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So, okay, what's going to be posted today? Huh? Are you going to post anything today? What's going to be posted? I'm going to release what I'm showing to you right now. Okay. All right. But I'm showing it to you so um, to give you an opportunity to ask any questions that you might. All right. So that's the format. That's all good. That's better than I expected. That's good. I, I like it. Okay. All right. So you say forgot to act like Uncle Bobo. What? What? Nothing. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I can't. All right. All right. I can't. No, no, all right. I'm good. Uh, all right. Um, Any questions? So Any other place questions? Place of music on the way up. Huh? Place some music on the way up. Well, the music is what caught me to mess up so i can't play music on the way out otherwise music would have played throughout the game <laughs> that was the goal to play it throughout the game what kind of, do you like jazz yeah i like jazz right. this okay. wasn't jazz though <laughs> so what's your what's your next one what's your next one after jazz what's what okay, okay. you like jazz What's the uh, next form of music that's your next favorite, uh, if jazz is your favorite? I didn't say jazz was my favorite. You asked me, do I like jazz? Jazz is not my favorite. R&B is my favorite. Oh, good. That's, that's um, what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. Just curious. Yep. Um, resolution of a bill, is that just changing a bill that already exists instead of abolishing it? No. So it's bill slash resolution because your bill is saying it doesn't just outline the problem it proposes um a resolution so Got that's it. what i mean by that okay because mm -hmm. i already had a subject that i kind of want to address but obviously i need to do more research on it but mm -hmm. um yeah i was just wondering how that i've never done this before <laughs> It's a good exercise, and um, I should say that it follows the reading. It follows um, where the author, Dana Bowen, um, 
Yeah, it follows where she's going or was going with um, her book. You know, as a lawyer, she's interested in um, changing the laws, changing the structure of things, changing the or challenging the healthcare delivery system. So all of, we've done a lot of different um, things, but yeah. the crux of what we've done is stick to the subject of justice. Mm -hmm. And so that's the reason why we are writing our own bills at the end, because it is about writing the wrongs that affect us in the healthcare delivery system. It's people of color that are hurt by that, not just black people. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's important. Yeah, I, I, I like the, the the last question on uh, uh, just just medicine, uh, chapter seven and nine. Yeah, I like that question too. Yeah, it was a very good question. Thank you. Thank you. That's finished. All right, lovely people. So I am gonna log off. If you have any questions, I will be online. Um, I will be online today, but I'm not doing Shabos, more Shabos stuff today, but I'll be online. So I'll hear it if you, if you need to get to me, I'll be able to hear it. I'm right here. Okay, what time is it? What time is it right now? It's 1.21. <laughs> <laughs> when I came up, they say, instead of running around, uh, running around with your nose all snotty, you want to know something, you better ask somebody. Yes. That's, that's why I, you know, that's why I yeah. come up to asking questions so I can, you know, keep it straight, keep it real, and know what's going on. I'm trying yeah. to. I appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate you for helping me with some uh, answers to my question. Of course. All right. Of course. Thank you. Thank you for all the information too. <laughs> it, was it really was, was nice. Fun. It was it fun. was fun. <laughs> Very informative, girl. Thank you.